Welcome back to the Slimming World Kitchen. I'm Sal Henley and I'm going to bring you another great recipe today. Today it's from the Slimming World Ultimate Curry Cookbook. This book is fantastic. It's got over 70 recipes, anything from street food to an Asian curry to an Indian curry. It even takes a fish pie and adds a little Carolyn twist to it. So what we're going to do is make a beef jow frazi. You like it hot? Uh, well, this is the recipe for you, but if you don't, we can adapt it slightly for your family. It involves quite a few ingredients, but bear with me. I'm going to show you how to prep them, and they're really quick and easy to do. I've got a little bit of garlic here. That's three cloves of garlic. I'm going to put it into a saute pan. If you want to buy a piece of equipment in the world, this is it. It's a deep saute pan. It's non-stick. It can act as a frying pan or a wok, and I love it. You can either use low calorie cooking spray, but I tend to cook a little bit with water. So the three garlic cloves go in there. You can use a crusher if you want, or if you want, you can put this and the chilies that I'm going to show you how to chop into a little mini food processor. If you can cheat it and just do it very quickly and bung it in, I'm with you on that one. So these are two green chilies. Now, if you don't like it too spicy, just maybe put one in. The way you test and see if the uh, chili is very spicy or not is just take a little bit and pop it into your mouth. This could be a mistake. Oh. oh, no, it's quite good, this one. So I might put two in there. And you're probably thinking, oh, I've got to get all the seeds out as well. Well, there's two ways you can do that. You can cut it down the side there and then scoop out the seeds and the membrane with a teaspoon. Or you can do this method, which is rolling it on the board. And you'll see that some of the seeds start to come out. But then they all come out like that. An alternative is you can cut it down the middle like I was saying, and then you can get a teaspoon or a knife, just be careful when you do it, and strip the seeds and membrane out with your knife. And it's as easy as that. Okay, so then scoop those seeds to the side. You can add those if you want it nice and spicy, but I tend to leave them out. And then you just want to chop that up. Again, bung in a little food processor if you don't want to be faff with that. Just bear in mind, obviously, you've got spicy chili on your hands, so don't touch your eyes with that. And look, I'm not a perfect cook. You just roughly chop it and chuck it in. I am going to add a little bit of water to that, just so that we can get that cooking. But like I said, low calorie cooking spray if you want to as well. And then what we're going to add is two tablespoons of curry powder. Now, Jao Frazi is traditionally very spicy. You can have a mild, medium or hot curry powder that you can get in the supermarket. If you are going to buy one of those, make sure it's got no flour, oil or sugar in it. Um, or alternatively, we've got a DIY curry powder actually in the book. It's delicious. Make a big batch of it, put it in a jam jar, and it will last two to three months. So you just add two tablespoons of your chosen one. Like I said, with the Jao Frazi, it's normally a hot one. I've actually chosen to go for a medium one on this occasion, because I don't like it so spicy. And then what we're going to do is add in some tomatoes. It's 200 grams of canned tomatoes. You can either get a small can or use half a can like that. And then you could whiz that up and make that into a lovely little kind of salsery thing with a bit of cucumber and a bit of red onion and some coriander. Um, so you use the other half of the can up. Waste not, want not. So we'll put that in and we'll give that a stir. Now that needs to cook out for two or three minutes. And we're just gonna make sure that all the spices are not granular in there. You know when you have a curry and it tastes really gritty? That's what we're trying to avoid and that's why you cook it for two or three minutes. So that's cooked out for about three or four minutes. You can see it's sort of made a nice kind of paste base for our lovely curry. Now we're going to add the protein. We're going to use steak, but you could use chicken if you wanted, or vegetables would be delicious in there. Just one point when you come to using meat, Make sure if you're using mince, for example, it's less than 5% fat. But with the steak or any sort of chops or anything like that, just make sure you remove any visible fat. So on here, obviously, we're going to take the rind off. And then I'm going to cut it. I'm going to give you a little trick on how to cut your meat so it's lovely and tender every time. So we'll take that to one side. And then I'm going to just take this bit off here. Now... A steak generally has what they call a grain. A grain is the way the sort of fibres run in the steak itself. In this steak, the fibres are going this way, so they're going vertically. 
What I'm going to do is cut it at a 90 degree angle so it goes across the grain. That's what you're trying to do. So it runs this way and my knife is going the other way. And what you'll do is you'll end up with little strips, but when they cook up, they'll be lovely and tender rather than that sort of chewy um, steak that you sometimes get. And we don't want that. So we're going to add that in. I might just remove that little bit there. And then I've got 400 grams in total. So that's going to go in along with this one here that I've already prepared. And just move that around, turn the heat up a bit so that you can get a bit of um, sort of fierce heat under there to sort of char it off a little bit. Every time you brown meat, it adds flavour and depth to your dish. And that's what we're kind of looking for. So we got that cooking, like so. And then what we're going to do is add in about 200 mils of boiling water. And depending on the sort of diameter of your saucepan or frying pan, you might need to add a little bit more during the cooking. But we're going to add that in and bring it up to a simmer. And you're basically trying to cook that until that has reduced by about a third. And the beef is lovely and tender as well. Then give it one final stir and we're going to cook the lovely peppers and onions that are going to make this the ultimate jalfrezi. So you can see the jalfrezi is really coming together. And I'm going to now do a bit of stir frying. And you're thinking, stir frying and curry? How's that happen? So what we're going to do is actually stir fry some lovely veg that is going to be thrown in there last minute. And then that gives the ultimate crunch. So I'm going to get this pan here nice and hot. Now what we're going to do is take two onions and these are being peeled and then I'm just going to cut those into quarters and I like them quite chunky and so I'm just going to cut this big one probably into about five or six quarters of each half, if you know what I mean. And now this is where I would use low calorie cooking spray because it's something that I actually want it to fry rather than it to steam. And I wanted to get that sort of charredness to it as well. And then um, there's another onion, a little smaller. Um, but essentially it's two medium on onions. It just so happens I have one very large and one very small. So we'll put that in. Try and keep your veg, even though they were different sizes, try and cut them up so they're a similar size so they cook at the same time. That's quite important. Then we've got a red pepper. Now I have two red pepper tricks. One is the standard one where I go like that, the top off, the bottom off, you stand it on its end, you run your knife down the side so you have an opening there and then you put your hand on there and you pull away as you move the um, knife forward and it removes all the seeds. Quick and easy and there's no waste because uh, you've got the top and the bottom and the middle section. Then you want to make it quite pretty. You've done lovely petals there. So let's make the, the pieces very pretty. So I just go along and I cut them into triangles. And again, similar size to the onion. And you could use green peppers as well as yellow or red. I just tend to use the red and yellow ones just because they're a bit sweeter. And if orange, orange are a bit harder to find, but I like those too. When I use a green pepper, it's normally like in a chili con carne or something like a very hot curry, like this one actually. And then a yellow pepper. So this is the other way. Obviously the pepper has a beautiful shape to it. So you want to utilize that. So you cut the cheeks off from the sides, like so. And you do get a bit more waste, but you can still take the other bits off like that. And the reason I do that is because I like using the curve of the pepper itself. And then you can again cut it into lovely sort of chunky pieces, try and not drop it on the floor like I did. There we go. And then just sort of roughly chop that up again. And you can hear it sizzling and that is how high you want it. As hot as you can get it. And so that we're getting that charred vegetable flavour to it because again that's going to add depth to it. Don't forget about the other one as well, give that a good stir. Again add a little bit of water if it's sticking or anything like that. Turn that down a bit, there we go, and then keep tossing that. Can you see how that's sort of starting to char up? So once I've got it that kind of colour, what I might do is lower the heat down so that it cooks the veg a little bit more with a bit of water. I mean, if I could try and keep the vegetables in the pan, that would help. Once that's charred up a little bit, I'm going to add tomatoes. Again, this sort of size tomato I'm going to cut into six, I think. 
like so. And again, it's two tomatoes, so two peppers, two onions, two tomatoes just cut into wedges. You know, it's home cooking. You're not cooking in a restaurant. So after a couple of minutes, you get this lovely sort of charred effect. I don't know if you can see that on there. And that's what you're looking for, that lovely depth of flavour. And if it's sticking too much or catching too much, just add a drop of water. But it will eventually soften down. It's like having fajita veg, you know, on that hot pan. And that's what you're looking for. It just adds that extra dimension to your dish. We are going to swap the pans over. And I'm going to add those vegetables in. I like them still kind of quite crunchy, but if you wanted to, you could cook those for another three or four minutes, just with a touch of water, and that will soften them down. Look how pretty uh, it's looking with all those vegetables in it. Just gonna turn the heat down on that, and actually off, because I'm gonna add some yogurt to it in a minute. And when you add yogurt, you need to make sure it's been off the heat for about five minutes, so that it doesn't sort of curdle the yogurt, because heat will affect it. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of fat-free Greek yogurt. It'll add that lovely sort of creamy note to the jow frazy. So just stir that in, and again, just make sure it's off the heat when you do that. And there you go. Creates that beautiful, lovely jow frazy curry. I reckon from start to finish, it's about 25 minutes with the chopping and everything like that, and you've got a delicious curry to feed the whole family. So with the beef jow frazy, I'm gonna serve it with some lovely white basmati rice. Now, I know a lot of you are terrified of cooking rice, but really, it's as simple as cooking pasta. Just get lots of boiling, rolling water in a saucepan, big saucepan, and a good volume of water as well, and then put your rice in, and then make sure it's really boiling and dancing in the water so that it doesn't stick together. Cook it for the pack instructions, and then you sieve it, and then just put a piece of kitchen towel over the top of it, and it will draw all the moisture out of your rice. Leave it for about five minutes before you serve it, and this is what you get. Now, of course, you can add a stock cube to the water and a bit of turmeric if you wanted to, to give you that lovely sort of pilau feel. Or go to the ultimate curry cookbook and find some great rice recipes as an alternative with lots of yummy flavor in it. So here we go, we've got the lovely beef jow frazy. We've got our basmati rice. And then what would you serve with this? Well, obviously a jow frazy is quite spicy. And to sort of um, cool it down a little bit at the table, those maybe younger mouths around the table, you might just add a bit of yogurt raita. That's also in the book if you wanted. It's basically yogurt with mint and cucumber in it, and it really does cool everything down. So serve it with that, and then a nice bunch of coriander. I like to just rip it off a plant and put a whole kind of bunch in there, but I love it. And there we go. Quick and easy beef jalfrezi.